right, hey guys, today we're doing another top five video talking about five tools you're going to need in your kitchen uh, to make it a little more successful and also a lot easier to do the cooking videos that we're performing on our YouTube channel. All right, so uh, the first thing we're going to talk about is pots and pans. So these four pots and pans that we have are the only things you really need in your kitchen to do almost every recipe. Um, let's start with the first one, which is an egg pan. It is usually a Teflon pan. These are awesome when it comes to making eggs. Uh, it also keeps it from sticking. Anything you sear on here is going to give you a higher quality of food. So I uh, suggest that. Um, next thing is our saucepan. Uh, this saucepan is actually also have a really uh, hard bottom. When you're looking for pans, you really want them to have a really thick bottom because it's going to hold heat consistently, giving you a, a, a lot hotter surface to cook your food in. Um, Next thing we're going to talk about is our saute pan. Saute pan is really simple. It's mainly for your everyday, you know, stir fries, um, even you know, searing your cutlets, steaks, or anything like that. This is your kind of go-to pan whenever it comes to bigger items. Next thing is, of course, our stock pot slash our boiler slash anything that's big that needs a lot of liquid. This is it. Um, getting yourself again. Nice thick bottom one, so it holds the heat in there. So if you put anything cold in here, such as your spaghetti, it doesn't take forever for it to come back to a boil. So really important, holds the heat consistently, and also has enough room to do whatever you need. Um, if you are a single person or even a couple, this is pretty much plenty. So uh, yeah, get to cooking with these. So the next thing we're going to talk about is the uh, utensils you're going to need to do a lot of your cooking in here, and it's only four utensils you really need in your, in your kitchen. So the first one is a high temperature rubber spatula. Uh, this is good for your making, mixing batters, sautéing, um, also when you're uh, doing anything uh, such as um, high temperature like fondues or anything like that. Uh, this is an awesome utensil. Plus, it goes up to 450 degrees, so even if you accidentally leave it in the oven or anything like that, it's not going to hurt. Uh, next thing we're going to talk about is the slotted metal spoon. Now, a slotted metal spoon is really good, especially when you're doing poached eggs, um, when you're uh, doing braises or anything like that, and you're trying to keep the liquid off of your food. Um, this is a really good tool to have. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about is the tongs. Now, this is pretty much my everyday use for everything. Grabbing anything hot, you get your tongs including pots, handles, or anything like that that I can't reach on the stove, you grab it with your tongs. This is your pretty much your existential hand when it comes to holding things. And of course, last but not least, a turner. So they come in different sizes. This is actually more like a burner turner, um, but this is actually handy for a lot of things. Um, leveling off, icing, you can also um, flip burgers onto a grill with this. You can take cookies off the pan. Um, you want something that's really sturdy, um, I suggest metal, but if you have stuff that are Teflon pans, um, make sure you use something that is like rubber or um, silicone based. So the next thing we're going to talk about is measuring devices. So uh, the first one we're going to talk about is measuring spoons. Um, measuring spoons are awesome, especially when you're trying to first start out cooking. Uh, start measuring things. Eventually you'll get to a point where you know how, how much a teaspoon and how much a tablespoon is. But if you're just starting out, follow the recipe, use your measuring spoons. These are going to be your saviors. Um, now, there is a big difference between a dry measuring cup and a liquid measuring cup. A lot of people think that if you use a liquid measuring cup to uh, measure out dry stuff, it's the same. No, it is not the same. Uh, so, always use a dry measuring cup for dry foods um, or such as peanut butter. That's really good for, for that. And always use a liquid measuring cup for anything that's viscous that you can pour. Use a measuring cup. Um, and again, if you are just starting out to cook and you don't know what a cup or anything like that is, I suggest use measuring tools. These are awesome and it also creates consistency in all your recipes. So make sure always use a measuring device when you're first starting to cook. Alright, the next tool we're going to talk about is knives. So there is definitely hundreds of different types of knives, definitely 100 different like countries makes different types of knives. Um, so I'm going to show you the three knives that I use the most and the reason why. So this is a Global Sentuco. I love this knife mainly for vegetable prep. Um, it's super light, it's easy to uh, cut. Also the handle is very uh, small because I have such big hands, I like to control things and also 
I hold everything in the first three fingers of my hand, so if it's super big, it doesn't make a difference to me. Uh, so, this is a really good knife. Also, if you see the edge has a rounded front, that's good for a lot more straighter cuts. Also, it, when you keep your uh, tip down, you have more um, leverage when you're cutting. Uh, the next thing is a, uh, this is an 8 inch uh, chef knife. Um, this one's actually made by uh, Running Man Forge, who is on our uh, Instagram. He got us one of these knives for our cooking demonstrations. Uh, if you want more information, we'll have that in the link down below. Um, these are, this is actually a really awesome knife. It's just a regular, you know, true chef knife when it comes to, has the point. Um, it's about, I would say, two inches in uh, uh, width for the knife. Um, really well balanced. Um, the handle on this one's a lot thicker. I like really thicker handles when it comes to like chopping bones or getting um, anything that's harder. This is a really good knife for that. And of course, um, as everyone who's probably been 18 in the last like, uh, I would say 15 years, uh, got a Cutco knife. Uh, the one thing I like about these knives is the handle on there, the ergonomic. Um, so when it comes to your knives, um, it's really important what suits you, uh, size, shape, whatever you need. It's really important to also the handle. It's really important to just find something that works for you. You don't need to have the most expensive stuff. Matter of fact, the cheapest knives usually work just as well as the most expensive knives. Um, and I think when it comes to the most expensive knives, you also have to take care of them a lot more. So uh, depending on the amount of responsibility you want with your knives, it's all to you. All right, last but not least, storage containers. This is a really important thing when it comes to um, leftovers or how to store your product after you get done using it for your night um, or even when you're prepping things in the future. Um, three different types of containers that I use in my kitchen. Um, core containers, uh, you can get them at any grocery, um, like uh, I would say surplus stores such as Catch and Carry, Winco. They have these by the bulk. Um, they're super cheap. Use them um, for like really good hot soups. They store really well. You can also freeze these. Um, they're super inexpensive too, and once they get really bad, you just throw them away. Um, if you're looking for disposable containers, this is a good way to go. Um, Tupperware. So, uh, finding really good Tupperware that is you know BPA free that you put into microwave or anything like that. These are really awesome for storing leftovers that you're going to be reheating later. You we always use Tupperware for that. And of course, Ziploc bags. Have them in different sizes. Uh, these are actually good for when you're doing a lot of uh, vegetable prep because you can you can uh, store them in here. They're super airtight. They you can put them in any kind of nook and cranny in your fridge. And if you have a lot of kids or anything like that, uh, Ziploc bags is actually going to save you a lot more space than these big old containers. So other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed our videos. Again, subscribe down below. Go to YouTube.com/feedthemass. Find us, go to Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, you name it, we're on there. Get connected with us. Comment down below what you guys think. Tell me what your favorite tool is in your kitchen. And if we did not go over it today, we'll talk about it in another future video. Other than that, I have, hope you guys have a wonderful day. And of course, God bless.